We are back. New York City Baseball, a Mets edition, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho from the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. My co-host and longtime friend, second grade, Mert Rose, hey. Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, Marty. Hi, everybody. Another beautiful Good. Florida day. Good yeah. to have you here. Yep. Uh, we got some great news. I, I just got it, found out about it. Uh, Mert slash Marty yep. is a grandpa. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first time grand granddad. Um, Born on Saturday. Your daughter gave birth. Tell me, what, what's yes. the name? Uh, you told me every uh, everything's fine. Evelyn, Healthy. Evelyn Maria Lanciano. Uh, nice, nice. That uh, ring rings true. Um, uh, my my grand my I, uh, my son-in-law is uh, first lieutenant in the army, and uh, hopefully later this year he'll make uh, captain, which should be nice. Where is he stationed? Well, right now he's in Fort Knox, but he's going to. Uh, uh, captain's training, which is in Fort Lee, Virginia, which is uh, okay. in Petersburg. Um, does he have some sort of specialty, or um, well, he, do? he was in uh, uh, the bomb disposal unit, but uh, that that unit closed up. So I'm not sure if he's going to remain in there or he's going to be switched out, possibly into logistics. Uh, I guess it depends what kind of slots are open for captain once he makes that. So. Right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Terrific. Terrific. Um, he's got to be proud, too. He's oh, absolutely. Everybody's thrilled. Uh, everybody's healthy. And, um, you know, the labor was was short. Um, the, the whole the whole deal went from like five in the morning till be just before nine in the morning when she was born. So uh, on Saturday, good. So yep, everything good. was really good. Yep. I'm so happy for you, Mert. That's uh, thank you. That's thank you. terrific. Yeah. Let's I celebrate know. by talking a little Mets ball. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, Harvey uh, Harvey pitched today. And, right, um, pitched four good innings, and then all of a sudden um, the wheels started right. off a little bit. I guess uh, when he started the third time through the batting order, uh, they started hitting him, and uh, they got him out. He got one out, I think, the fifth inning, and they and they took him out. Um, but you know, in the first two times through the batting order. The claim that he looked better than he had earlier in earlier outings, but um, mm -hmm. you know, the, I, I guess the, the more you the more you see him, the more you're learning about the uh, the surgery and what the time frame is on this surgery because you know it's not like but Tommy John where a million know, guys have had it. Took his rib out. The, um, Went through yeah. his neck to get this rib. Uh, had, I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, well, did they go in and just kind of dissolve the rib? I uh, guess they just they just removed it somehow. I think the neck was a separate problem. Um, I, I mean, I don't really know anything about the surgery, but but they're saying that you know it could be several months until he gets back to. You know what people expect of him. You know, uh, right. so you know, so uh, you know, if he if he even makes the rotation, there's a chance he may not. I, um, well, if he, I think, uh, uh, is there a chance that they could just continue to rehab him in Florida, or yeah, because uh, uh, our friend uh, John Delcos a couple of days ago said. Uh, do you think the Mets have the stones to keep Harvey off the opening day roster? And thinking about that, I said, you know, they got enough guys to 
to have five good starters. And if they feel that he's not where he should be, then, you know, they already said earlier that Wheeler was going to be in extended spring training. So I don't see why Harvey can't go to extended spring training if he is not where they think he should be. I mean, and Lugo's pitched that really good. Gazelman and Lugo. Yeah. Lugo's pitched they very good in the WBC. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Gazelman's pitched I'm pretty well. I'm watching Lugo in the WBC, and he yeah. is yeah. one big guy. I didn't realize he's like 6'4", 225. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that either. So yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, yeah. It, they seem deep. I guess. John Delcos probably referred to the fact that um, Boros is the agent, um, and is that part of the part of his thinking with the Stones? Or uh, um, well, I, I, I mean, could could be, it could be. Right. Uh, I, I didn't come get up just to that, but maybe just to the fans uh, or. Or to you know what what Harvey would think himself if if they left him down there. Um, I don't know, but look, he's got something to prove yet. Uh, right. Let's face it. I mean, they they don't owe him anything. Um, Certainly you know, don't. Was, and the no. way he talks, he's he never seemed quite satisfied, and they always held out that veiled threat that he'd go to the Yankees. I don't know what it was, where I read it originally, but there's, oh, there was always something way back back there that um, that's know, what... Being from, what, being what from Connecticut, was he, was he a Yankee fan when he was you I know, don't know. being brought up in Connecticut? I, I don't know. Yeah, but, more than likely, if he was brought up in Connecticut, it's a hop, skip, and a jump to, to the Bronx yeah. as opposed to to Queens. Um, that that could be. And is free is free agent after what next year? After eighteen? Right. I think I think this is the option year. I think this is the okay. option year next year. Mm. Or this is. Sure. Well, we'll see. Whatever. Yeah. There's, there's no reason um, to push uh, Interesting because trivia question. Of the of all those pitchers, the, the the great you know, I hope it doesn't turn out to be the Pulsifer years. We do, because <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm getting old, Mert. <laughs> yeah. And go, well, if they're going to develop another pitching staff, they it may be for the kids and the grandkids. Um, <laughs> This is the no, one. This, this, has, this has to be it. This is this, this is it. <laughs> right. I mean, if they don't you win think. this year or next year, uh, I don't know what to say because, you know, the Grom's going to well, be coming up soon and, uh, you know, that they can't hold on to all these guys forever. It's not no. going to happen. So. No. So um, with that in mind, let's – uh, let's make it happen right now. I think the team is as deep as I've seen them since, uh, dare I say, 1986, when they had guys like Danny Heap and Mitchell uh, as, you, as semi-utility men and uh, two center fielders and Mookie and Dykstra. Um, they, you know, they were just terrific backup catcher. Uh, everything... Everything looks pretty much the same, except for catching. Catching's a question mark. Um, yeah, uh, so no has not been throwing well. Uh, no, I saw that. Ye- I saw that yesterday, um, and you know he's 26. <laughs> it's a, it's not like yeah. um, he's had years of being a catcher. Has he uh, topped out defensively, let alone offense? Offensively, he's been swinging the bat. Um, Bruce gets hurt this week trying to play first base. Um, 
that you can't have God uh, stealing second, like, automatically, um, you know, because he can't throw anybody out. Uh, right, and that's going to there continue. is too, um, a consistent lack of pitchers holding guys on effectively. Yeah. Syndergaard is a sieve when it comes to that. And yeah. um, we don't see Rivera. Is Rivera playing uh, the catcher, Rivera? Is he playing? He's in the WBC. Oh, okay. So I think, I think he should be joining the team soon because I, I think he was on the Dominican team that got eliminated. Wasn't he? Him ah, and Reyes? Oh, I think so. Okay. Oh, what a catch. I did happen to see part of that in a highlight that Andrew Jones made in that tournament. Oh, um, yeah? That's that's some very good ball, let me tell you. It's like a, uh, five, six all-star, to, all-star teams. A um, lot, oh, yeah. lot of talent. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. But, uh, so... Um, uh, yeah, I would like to see him. Um, uh, I know he doesn't appear to be an everyday catcher, but um, who does? No. Well, there was look, a catcher catch- released, uh, Norris, I think it was, released by San Diego, former A. Yeah. And there was talk of um, uh, somebody asked, I don't know if there was talk from the Mets, but somebody asked on one of the threads whether or not it, they'd be considering it, and I wonder if you heard anything about that. I did not, no. I've heard nothing. Okay. Very little talk about catchers. Um, I don't know. They um, this, this kid that they had in camp, uh, Nito, is that his name? Right. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. We talked kid. about him. A week or so ago, um, he's yeah. young, but he can throw. And uh, it, you and I were talking about a week or so ago yeah. in a game. Um, he didn't get down for what was a ball in the dirt. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it might have been ruled a wild pitch, but that was um, certainly preventable with uh, – yeah, but- Seeing as how he's never, he's never played, he's never played higher than high A, so he's definitely not not ready. He's probably no. going to be in he, Binghamton, you know, this year, I would think, because he was at uh, but a lot last of year he was at Port St. Lucie, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, if they then, give up on again, Darno, well, look, if if that's true. If he's in Binghamton, unless he just forces his way up, which is a possibility, you're probably looking two years for that. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Polecki's that good a thrower either, is he? Do you recall? No. I don't no. think he, he I, I didn't come up any bigger than Darno last yeah, year. Yeah, I don't, I don't think when Polecki's better. he had the opportunity... Yeah. yeah, he had the opportunity to step in because Darno really had a bad year. There was some stat, I might have mentioned this to you before, how few RBIs Darno had or it yeah. was either with running runners in scoring position or whatever. He was incredibly inept last year. Mm-hmm. Got to feel maybe, you know, he could turn that around, but I don't see how you could turn the defense around. Um, yeah. As we both talked about, you especially, he did in the off season work with a catching instructor, and he was um, yeah. somewhat confident. But I don't know. One yeah, one weak not- weak link that you don't like to see is up the middle. If you can have a weak link at all, you'd prefer mm-hmm. it, it would be in position. Um, in corner positions, uh, but I will say this: I've been watching Granderson speaking about up the middle. He uh-huh. looks and appears to be much younger. He's regener- rejuvenated, or uh-huh. whatever it is. He's uh, a spark of energy, and yeah. um, with Lagares last, last year of his contract too. So. Right. 
which he is wants to, uh, he's we could going be after this. He's, from, yeah, he's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, we could be benefiting because you would hope that it, by next year, he's 37, you would hope they could be moving on and not be offering him a long-term term oh, deal at no, 37. No, def- definitely not, no. Yeah. So um we got too many young yeah, outfielders. It, uh, yeah. So he's right. definitely going to be good. And to with season. Nemo, um, he's a little banged up right now, but I think him coming off the bench, I think it'd be best if Conforto went out and got some at-bats. I'm sure they're thinking about that right now. I'm sure they are, yeah. It's, um, yeah, they got to make a decision there, no question about it. So. Okay. Um what else? Veteran what else? I mean. Relief pitching. Ah, relief pitching. Familiar's uh, back in camp. They say they've completed the investigation. Oh, isn't that something? Eight yeah. months to <laughs> complete the, the investigation, and they finally did it three weeks into spring training, and they, they haven't. They, they don't have the decency to say, we completed the investigation, and here's our findings, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. we completed the investigation, and we'll let you know. <laughs> Hang on the cross a little bit longer. Just wait wait for us. Would yeah. it, um, Can't be more than That's not fair. Yeah. No. Yeah, he'll probably... Is, did they announce it, did you say? No, I said it can't be more than 30 days. Can't, you know, no, it shouldn't can't. Be. Given Chapman was um, right. almost right. the identical... Cert- uh, right, and the case was thrown out of court, and uh, you know, there's no reason it should be more than 30 days. Or maybe it'll be less. Who knows? I mean, yeah. Uh, was um, Chapman's case thrown out, or was Familia's, or both? I think both were. Okay. So yeah. well, um, so you could li- you, as a team, you could almost live with uh, with Reed. Um, although that, uh, you know, that weakens it all kind of down the line. You know, you you had your eighth, had Reed in the eighth inning. You had Blevins maybe in the in the seventh, and everybody moves up. Um, Elgin looks like Elgin. Is that that his name? Uh, Edge Edgin. 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 Edgin looks like. Um, He's going to get the roster spot. That's what I what Yeah, I he probably guess. will. And also, I like the idea that it, whoever doesn't make the rotation, Lugo or Gazelman, that's not a bad um, option as a swing man, as uh, long relief. Uh, mm-hmm. Never know. No, that's true. Unless, unless, unless they decide to keep Harvey down there, and both of those guys go in the rotation, you know, so that right. could be too. That's, that's that true. Could be too. That could happen too. No. But I'll tell you, that, though, the, um, there's still two weeks left, and that he did go through the rotation twice yeah. and did well, He's gonna, they're going to look at this as a, a step up. I think. No, I'm sure. Even yeah, though he, he got sure. banged around in, what was it, in the fifth? Yeah. Um, so. Then they got, they got that Fernando Salas also, who, he's a, you know, he's pretty decent. He he was also, I think, I'm not sure if he was in the WBC or, or he was having visa problems or something. But I think a, it was visa was a, problems. Yeah, he yes. was a late arrival. But. You know, he's 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 a decent option for the uh, seventh inning, also. Uh, he, you know, he he wasn't he wasn't bad last year. I think he's pretty good. Right. Um, you know, Mer, we were going to be joined today, and I uh, am curious as to why he isn't here. Marty Appel was going to return to these airwaves. Um, he and his publicist sent me a copy of a book that he wrote uh, called Casey Stengel, Baseball's Greatest Manager. Baseball's Greatest Character, 
not just yeah. the manager. Yeah. And um, he was a character, Casey. And uh, Marty asked me to review the book a little bit. Haven't read all of it. I read the the Mets part about Casey. And um, mm -hmm. a few things I was surprised at was that twixt the time that the Yankees fired him and um, the Mets came into existence, George Weiss made the decision to hire him. He had been offered a job. I heard that he had been offered the Angels job. Really? And for one reason or another, I was stumbling through, through the Mets section, uh, Casey with the Mets, he didn't take it. But um, he was also offered the Detroit Tiger job, which I thought would have been very interesting wow. if he took that one. Um, given that the Tigers were at, I think they were the number one rivalry of in the American League, as the best of their rivals. Let's put it that way, in the late sixty, in the late fifties and early sixties. But with K-Line and Keen. Oh, they were great. Yeah, they were, they were, were terrific. You remember you and I used to go on Sundays, we'd go to Rockaway with our transistor radio. <laughs> we'd listen to do double headers between the Yankees. And yeah. This was yeah. going to be 61. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Tigers played you know, I the went to a I went to a double header with Detroit. Um Back in, um, it, might, it, it could have been '61 or, or let's see, mm -hmm. yeah, probably was '61. Uh, you know, and you knew it was going to be a sellout. Now I was supposed to go with some some guy. I mean, we were really young then. I I was supposed to go with some classmate from from like junior high school or something, and I was supposed to meet him in the, around the 74th Street. Jackson Heights subway station, and I said, "Look, if you're not there, now I knew this guy was always late." I said, "If you're not there, we're never going to get a seat. It, 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 we're, we're lucky if we even get a ticket." So of course he doesn't show up, you know. Uh, by the time we said, so I went myself, and there was no seats. You know where I was sitting on the steps. No. I, you, you know how big that original Yankee Stadium was. I oh, mean, yeah. that place held, uh, it had to be close to 70,000, the original Yankee Stadium. Right. And there was, and that not, was filled. not a seat to be had before the first game, sitting on the steps all the way up in the in the top. Unbelievable. What a place. <sighs> they had... Such a rivalry with Detroit back back then. It was great. They had a terrific yeah. team. They did. Um, well, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I didn't know Casey was uh, up for that job. That's interesting. Yeah. Very that's one of the things I read in Marty's book that um, it just kind of surprised me. He took the job not even knowing they were the, the Mets. He called them the Knickerbockers. <laughs> and, um, as bad a draft as they had and as much as they were really screwed over by the National League, when in 61, or I guess in 60, when the Angels and the new Senators drafted, there, um, there was a much fairer and equitable system. Talk to Peter Golenbach about this on a show that I did last night. Can't think of the rule change that it was, but by the time the National League expansion, Houston and the Mets came around, they made a rule change of some sort, which enabled the Mets and Houston not to have the pickings that. Um, oh, so they so they let the teams uh, protect more more players. Either more players or I, I really don't know what it was, but mm -hmm. I do know that whatever the rule change was, the main reason they didn't have a good draft, they just decided to go for uh, nostalgia. Basically, they uh, 
filled the team yeah. with former Dodgers, yeah. and it wasn't just names Craig. everybody knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Craig Hodges, but it was little guy, you know, the insignificant guys, Clem Labine over the hill, Pignatano yeah. over the hill, Ginsburg they brought back uh, yeah. with Dodge, you know. Dodgers. Charlie Neal. Yeah. Pardon me? Charlie Neal. Oh, yeah. Charlie Neal, who Gus Bell. was a terrific ball player. Oh, a lot of those guys were terrific. In... Richie Ashburn was, was a great player in his time. But, I know. He, was, he just yeah. one step, just had lost that one step. Um, yeah. And Richie Ashburn hit 300, as a matter of fact, with, with that early, with that first Met team. He just wasn't going to come back for the losing no. after that. But um, just uh, I want to get back to Charlie Neal. He yeah. did have a, a real bad drinking problem, and his career fizzled after being Rookie of the Year. Uh, Mets didn't know about it before uh, uh-huh. beforehand, and um, – him being a Dodger, they were, you know, stars in the eyes about that, and uh, it just didn't turn out well. But Casey was the only one in the world who could have gotten New York, a team that never can understand losers. <laughs> they have no uh, no taste for losers. They get a team that after five years of no National League team. We both know how tough that was to be a kid and your team is gone. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, that sucked, Blue Gold. Yeah, but look, no, no matter how good the Yankees were in all those years, New York was still considered a National League city because of the rivalry with the Dodgers and the Giants. And, and pe- people in New York were starved for National League Baseball. And, you know, when the Mets but came... But they got behind a loser that was the all-time loser. They lost in incredibly yep. different ways that uh, were... is almost cosmic. You know, like uh, the stars are lined up for them to lose. And uh, still New York left them. They became lovable. And it was Casey himself who... Um, he was just... Uh, Right. He had a lot to the to the writers. He he could mm-hmm. keep them up all night drinking and um, telling stories and diverting them from what was going on in the field and um, charming the press. You can charm the fans. They did, um, mm-hmm. and he did it. They became the laughing stock, but the most lovable team. Um, and let Leonard Cop it said once, he, he said, um, it hurts too much to, uh, people were standing by the exits to leave, you know, they're getting blown away, but they couldn't walk out the door, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, they're looking over their shoulder, it's 18 nothing, you know, but <laughs> we want to see <laughs> what's going on, so um, they were lovable. I want to yeah. give Casey some credit in um, – uh, this is what I was going to tell Marty Appel, who yeah. um, uh, put uh, put a great book together. The Yan- When we think of the dynasty that was the Yankees when we were kids, mm-hmm. we were almost too young to remember the particulars – when they won from 49 to 53. And in 54, they had the highest winning percentage they ever had, and they lost to Cleveland. And after that, they came right back and uh, and won again. And had a, this, but they were two separate dynasties. It was the DiMaggio turning, over, turning it over to Mantle. And all the way down the line, they were turning over players at every position and not hurting. For instance, Rizzuto got a little old. Here comes Tony Kubek, gives him a number of years. Right. Second base, 
after Billy Martin was ceremoniously dismissed after the mm-hmm. Copacabana incidents, they they come right back. The uh, um, Bobby Richardson. Bobby Richardson wins the job, and yep. so on. Scarron Lee's Pepitone comes comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, third base, the, the, the same. You had Andy Carey go, going out. You had. Gil McDougal retiring, replaced by by other guys. It was a marvelous transition that I think any other manager, I mean, Casey must have been a genius, to keep it together with Mantle, you know, with DiMaggio retiring, Mantle coming in, whole new different breed of cat, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and then... Later on, uh, still a different breed of cat. Um, the younger players, uh, the Bountains. And, uh, that was uh, that all before the baseball draft, right? The, there was the draft right. didn't exist then. So right. anybody that wanted to be a Yankee, that was good enough. You know, they just shelled out the money, and there was the player. <laughs> yeah, and um, they had Kansas City as a farm club, basically. Pretty much, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember. I remember going to the schoolyard one day in 1961, maybe could have been 60 even. But now 61. Bud Daly gets the best pitcher in Kansas City. Underrated guy, just a uh-huh. terrific pitcher. The Yankees pick him up just to enrich their rotation, mm-hmm. um, and. To say nothing of Roger Maris coming over, right. um, that, that didn't hurt. Uh, Ralph no. Perry went back and back and forth. Um, yeah, but it took some doing, and so I give Casey an awful lot of credit for that, and I also give him a lot of credit for the instructional league, which he yeah, he came pretty up. much started started that, didn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah, and that had the um, first one. Yeah. Had the first one, and um, he just would take guys out there and go through the fundamentals and uh, introduce them to the the best. Pro- he take the best prospects. It was just uh, just like the Arizona Fall League is now, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you get all your best prospects, you play them. You instruct them. You give them the best best of instruction, and um, you slowly wean them in. And um, he, was one of, he was one of the first guys that did a lot of platooning, also. Absolutely, absolutely. Was, uh, and not just he would manage on hunches, where, and they would work out. Um, yeah, it's just <laughs> incredible. Um, and crazy little philosophies that weren't all that crazy. I remember, I don't remember who it was, a middle infielder, it might have been Andy Carey, um, gets two home runs in a game. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second inning in the sixth inning. Comes up again in the eighth, Casey pinch hits for him. Says, (laughs) what are the chances? Okay. Yeah. Casey said, yeah. "Oh, the guy, whoever it was, was so mad. You can just imagine." Um, yeah. yeah. Some guys. I remember an interview was... that I I heard um, several years ago. Um, Bill Scourin was being interviewed, and they were talking about Casey, and he said that Casey Stengel one time pinch hit for him in the first inning. Wow. <laughs> I, I know yeah, he, he couldn't that believe it. Yeah. Player, yeah, but he couldn't <laughs> believe it. He, you know, he was like <laughs> so angry, and you know, like who would pinch hit for somebody in the first inning? You know, well, there you go. Uh, his philosophy was after he took the guy out, whoever it was, after the two home runs, Casey said, and it makes sense. What do you think his chances are of getting a third home run? He hasn't had two uh, two home runs in a month all year, and. <laughs> He just hit two. His odds go down from from that. And if you think about it, um, probably right on that thing. But could you imagine having to play for that guy? 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Marty didn't. Marty Appel, Marty Rose, yeah. comma yep. Marty Rose, comma mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't show up because. Um, first of all, Marty, let's tell them before the show. We agreed that I'd call you Mert because we're having <laughs> Marty on. And it's 20 minutes later, and I can't remember that. <laughs> so, um, think about what we're dealing with here. Yeah. But I would have Sorry. liked to ask, and I hope we get a chance to uh, hope he reschedules with us. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to ask Marty more uh, something about George Weiss. He's, we know, we the public, the baseball fans, we know so little about this guy. So much has been written about Branch Rickey, Connie Mack. Um, mm-hmm. I'm looking for a definitive biography on on Weiss and what mm-hmm. he was about. And I would have liked to know about their relationship because yeah. I know Weiss got rid of Billy Martin um, above, um, despite Casey's, um, insistence that he keeps him. And Billy Martin was like a kid to Casey. It really hurt him. Um, he put up a, a good front. He said, well, it's a business. And he tried to tell Martin that. And they were estranged for a lot of years because he didn't think that Casey stuck up for him. But I would would have liked to ask him more, ask him about the relationship that they had, Casey and Weiss. Because whatever it is, it worked. And for whatever failures the Mets had in their first few years under Weiss and Stengel, they were both instrumental in building the 86 um, championship. If for nothing more than Casey worked with guys coming up like um, Swoboda, and what have you, but for what he passed on to Whitey Herzog, who was part of that original instruction league, league, instructional league, when he was a Yankee farmhand, and he learned all that stuff from Casey, and Herzog was instrumental in building that 86 team. He was... Uh, he coached with them for a while, and he was big in their minor leagues, and um, he really gets a lot of credit for the 86 thing, and that goes through Casey. So, And certainly George Weiss uh, laid the groundwork with a lot of, lot of folks. He drafted Tug McGraw, signed Tug McGraw, um, all that stuff. So um, there you go. Marty Appel, I hope you come come back and um, soon. But uh, I know um, Marty Rose will. And, yep. Um, yep. We'll and not. we'll do it next week. And by then we should know a little bit more about what's going on with the back end of that rotation, which really interests me. Because if they could keep some health and they could keep it going, I wanted to ask you my trivia question. Of all the pitchers they have coming coming up, these guys, who who has the most wins right now? Syndergaard, DeGrom, um, who has the most career wins? Interesting question. Um, Out of all those guys, who has the most wins? I would have to say... Oof. Um, I don't know. I guess I guess Syndergaard. Well, no, it can't be. He's only twenty-three. It's got to be the Grom. The Grom's twenty-eight. He's been around a little bit longer. So is it the Grom? It is the Grom. He's he's okay. got like thirty wins, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I misread that. That sounds like a lot. But he, I. Do remember he's got the most wins. Okay. I'm sure he does. Yeah. Uh, There you go. Um, 
kudos to Major League Baseball TV for providing the WBC. Um, it's terrific. Taking some kudos away from them, very few games are televised in the spring. They, the way they advertise it, you're going to get 300 spring training games. But there are 300 spring training games, but very few are, are, te- are um, yeah. televised. Somewhat disappointed, sure. but I do know that um, what with this program, uh, you get literally every every game played in the day is televised by home team and away team. You get your choice of whatever game you're watching, as long as it's not an uh, in-market conflict with uh, something going wherever you are. And I don't don't even know how they figure that because there are times uh, I'm in California and I'll I'll see a Detroit-New York um, exhibition game and they'll say, that's blacked out in your area. So I don't know what what determines that, but I do know, for my sake, I'll be able to get every Met game going. And yeah, I know one day you said you had the Met game on MLB in California, and here in Florida on MLB we had the Yankee game the same at the same time. So right. I don't know so how they, that works. Um, and I've, there are times when I, I get the Yankees here and not the Mets, and why I would ever be blocked out for geographical reasons is beyond me. Yeah, I don't understand that one. They were playing the Giants or the A's, I, that I could understand. Right, right, right. Well, it's the same but, thing um, here in the regular season. Um, if you want to see any of the Marlins or Rays games, you have to have an additional sports package for $10 a month in addition to, you know, the MLB package because the MLB is blacked out in Florida when they play. So if I want to see eight teams. Does that come come on the computer or is that on TV? On TV. On On TV. TV. Okay. Yeah. All right. I I also want to say something. I'm going to ask you because, as you know, I'm really not used to watching a lot of games of late. Mm Mm-hmm lived in camper vans and RVs for a lot of years and Uh became incredibly dependent on the pleasure of having the radio broadcasts in the background. Mm -hmm. Always had it on the radio and Mm -hmm. depended a lot on announcers and analysts to give me an idea of what's going on. I've been listening to the radio broadcasts of the spring training games. I I did buy that package. Me too. There's Howie and Josh. They are so good when they're on. And yeah. the new guy, too, third guy, too. They are so descriptive. And for someone like me who's on the computer and goes back and forth, it's almost better to have the radio. I'm almost sorry I bought the TV thing. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it works during the yeah. year. But I wanted to ask you, first of all, when we watched TV as a kid, when we got a game, it, um, it was first of all it was in black and white and it was like two cameras they've got 17 cameras going and I yeah. don't I love that I love that but their angles are always so close up they're set they don't go back and take a look at the whole field and take long shots so you can see who's positioned where Who's, uh, you know, is the outfield. Yeah, no, you don't, you, don't, you don't really see that. You're right. No. Hey, that takes a lot away from it, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'd much rather be sitting in front of the computer, a nice color color screen, and you, you're yeah. sitting there, and you have, rather than go out and fight the crowds, you would think, wow, I could see it all, see different angles. But no, it's so close that it, it just, um, they'll hone in, this ground ball to third, they'll hone in on the third baseman, and then yeah. they'll hone in on the first baseman. But right. they won't take 
the the whole field so you could see the runners advancing, how far they're getting and all. Right. No, you can't um, do that at all. No, no. Yeah, and I don't know why that is. I guess it's a, a trend of um, – it just looks looks like a video game, and these video games are incredibly realistic nowadays. You can, I can go buy a video game in the storefront, you know, in a game store, and you look at it, it looks like a real game going on. I mean, they, they capture expressions um, and what have you, but the way it's um, the way it's produced sticks in my craw, and I. Uh, well, I have you to share that with Marty because yeah. uh, well, generally I well, have look, nothing they, to complain about. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. They show the center field camera every pitch, and then right. they switch to they switch to wherever the ball is hit, and that's all you see. Like you said, right? That you know, they hit exactly a ground ball right. to third. You, you see the third baseman, and you see the throw over, and that's it. But you're right. No, you can't get the perspective of the of the whole field, and you know, unless you're sitting out at the ballpark. Let's face it. There's, no, there's really Absolutely. no way. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, and that's the experience. Boy, I can't wait. I mean, I just really can't wait. You, on a Saturday afternoon, you go out there in the sun. Mm-hmm. There's no clock. If you want, <laughs> if you don't want to be there, if you want to sped up, then don't be there. <laughs> that's, that's my idea. Every it's got to be faster. It's got to be faster. Don't go. Don't enjoy it. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, also, what kills it though? Let's be be fair. You go out with a family of four. You go out with with two kids, and you're talking about a two hundred dollar experience. And of course, not sitting in. Yeah, of course. Of not sitting course. in the best seats in the house. Yeah. You know. Um, and, and maybe uh, yeah. maybe I'm down downplaying that. Maybe it's more. Um, yeah, it's probably more. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it sure. probably is more. When well, you throw in the parking and, you know, we used to buy oh, hot dogs for 25 cents. Remember that? Yeah, right. Yes. I and also now, remember when a slice of... How much is a hot dog now? Five bucks? Five cents. Six bucks? Walking, walking home from Newtown at Frank's. <laughs> On Northern Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, you know. Love you, Mert. You get, we'll see you next you week. Get a and a slice uh, of Coke for a quarter, too, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was saying. Slice in a, <laughs> right. <laughs> in a styrofoam cup, which is still <laughs> filling a landfill someplace. That, <laughs> that <laughs> the, And probably part of that pizza hasn't been digested yet, either, if you stop to think about it. <laughs> All right. Um, stay well. Congratulations, right, Grandma too. Egg. Yep, and, I'll do that. Uh, Thank you. I I'll try to send so some pictures out. You, Mert. All right, thanks, I'll man. I'll look for them right now. Be All right. Good, Mert. Yes. See All you right. next week. Everybody All out right. there, uh, keep on keeping on. New York City Baseball, a comfortably zoned radio network production. Adios, everybody.